This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Computer-assisted auditing techniques should be largely revision for you. And if you remember, there are two main types of computer-assisted audit techniques. There is something called an audit program, and there's something called test data. Now, an audit program is a program which belongs to the auditors. And essentially, it's a program which can be set up to read clients' data files. And as it reads the client data files, you can set parameters within it. Uh, for example, to select samples for investigation, you could say, I want you to you know, select every hundredth one or, or do it more randomly. Or you could set it to stratify that I want, uh, you know, 10 balances under 10,000. I want uh, uh, 20 balances between 10 and 50,000. Uh, and I want 10 balances over 50,000. Any, anything of that sort. And it will go through and it will select the right number of balances in each of the strata. And it can take a, a huge amount of uh, uh, human endeavor out of it. It makes it much faster, cheaper, potentially more accurate. It can reperform calculations. Think about depreciation. Uh, you're probably used to doing little accounting problems where you know the the cost is a hundred thousand, the depreciation rate is twenty five percent, so the uh, depreciation charge is going to be twenty five thousand. But in practice, that doesn't work because of that cost of a hundred thousand, some of those items might have been fully depreciated and don't require any more depreciation. The only way you can really do it is, is to go through and see how far is the asset depreciated and make sure you're doing it into kind of negative net book value. Other areas you might want to, to look at, how do we know that the stock file is added up correctly? Now, you know that every extra dollar on closing stock is an extra dollar on, on profit. So what happens if the, uh, the client's program has been deliberately set, fraudulently set, uh, to, to add up or to list out, you know, thousands of items of stock and then put an inflated uh, uh, total on the bottom. Or age receivables listings. Age receivables listings that you're going to use for your valuation, really, of the receivables. What happens if one of them is, is uh, you know, one category is misallocated and, and they begin including relatively old debts uh, as though they were relatively young? You can look for unusual items. Uh, for example, negative balance on inventory, credit balances on receivables, debit balances on payables, uh, inventory which hasn't moved at all for the last three months. These are all potentially unusual items. And whereas uh, an awful lot of uh, auditing is based on taking relatively small samples, in some cases it's important to look at everything. And doing it manually would be uh, not practicable. I'm thinking, for example, of fraud. So you know that someone's committing uh, a fraud by putting through little invoices of uh, $90 because the um, authority level, if you like, needed is, is 100. So you just come under the uh, where authority is needed. Uh, but you know that these fraudulent amounts tend to go to one bank account or, or tend to go to a fake supplier with three particular names. And you could have, you know, hundreds of thousands of purchase transactions in a large company. But you can set the order programs loose on it. Say, you know, look for that supplier, look for that bank account, uh, and print all of those out. And again, done relatively simply, easily, quickly, cheaply, accurately. Now, programs uh, interrogate data the other element is test data, and test data is the auditor's data, and you let the client's programs operate on that. So if uh, the uh, client says that uh, every um, claim for wages of over 70 hours per week is kind of rejected and requires special authorization, uh, how do we know? Uh, a lot of the time now, there's maybe nothing printed out. It's just a kind of screen that comes up and somebody kind of just uh, authorizes it on a, on a keyboard, something like that. So what you can do is you could put in maybe clock cards with three employees, one 
has worked 35 hours, it should just go straight through. When you put in for 80 hours and see if it comes up on the screen asking for authorization. And maybe you put one on in 70 hours just to see what happens on that kind of cutoff that place. Uh, if you're dealing with uh, uh, ordering over the internet, what happens if someone puts in a product that doesn't exist? Or, uh, or they put in a negative amount for a product. So if you order minus 10 of something, is instead of asking for money, is it going to pay you money? Uh, because everything goes through kind of minus minus the amounts and, and so on. Test data op are operated on and are used to test the operation of clients' programs. Are the controls operating correctly? And are the calculations being performed correctly? Is what they're going to tell you. Test data is slightly more problematical to use probably than ordered programs. Order programs take a while to set up first year because you have to know, you know, the pattern of the client's file, exactly where the wage rate is, exactly where the tax code is, exactly where uh, maybe the overtime rate is and, and so on. So so your program has to match the file. So it's often a little bit of extra time on the first year. But assuming then that the client doesn't alter the file layout, it's going to work very well subsequently. Test data is slightly more problematical because if you think about it, uh, testing that, that person by putting in the, the three hours, the 35, the 70, and the 80, I think it was. If you put somebody in with 35 hours, you put it into the real data, into the real salaries information, you're basically putting in false information, which is now going to be incorporated into financial statements. And quite rightly, clients are a bit wary about that. So the way test data tends to be run is what's known as dead test data. In other words, the client gives you a, a copy of their system and you can play away to your heart's content on that. It doesn't matter what damage you do to it, you are not altering the real records in which the financial statements are going to be drawn up. The new thing you need to be wary about is that the copy they give you is up to date and that they haven't put through some program amendment uh, which is maybe messing up their program but they keep giving you the old version uh, which they know and you know works well. The third uh, approach is to have what's called embedded audit facilities. Uh, here's one called integrated test facility or uh, systems control and review file. Now think about it. A customer comes and orders goods from you, let's say for 100,000. Let's say that happens in February. The transaction is then paid for in March. So that person doesn't figure any more on the receivables ledger. So when you come to test the receivables and the operations of the receivables ledger, even though that person hasn't got a balance, uh, nevertheless, it would be perhaps a bit peculiar if large amounts going through receivables, just because they were matched with a payment, never came up for substantive tests at the end of the year. So what embedded audit facilities do, uh, they can be set up to, if you like, siphon off uh, and make a separate record of, say, significant transactions. So on the side, maybe every order you get in, over 100,000, you make a note of it on a kind of memorandum file. Ideally, this memorandum file will be encrypted and it will be password protected so that only the auditor can gain access to it. So all of these large material transactions are kind of saved for the auditors at the end of the year. And then they can go in and they can review these large transactions to see if anything uh, seems untoward. So computer-assisted order techniques, fantastically useful. A little bit of time maybe to set them up. Uh, but once they're set up, they will often run for, for you know very many periods, very many years, with very little care and maintenance, and can really cut down uh, the time taken and the fee uh, that's required for an audit.